which is really the, the whole problem with the IPCC, isn't it? Um, so we had a very um, vibrant discussion. We began by looking somewhat negatively on, on some of the ways that the IPCC past reports haven't, um, I guess, some of their failures in readability or in, in effective communication. Um, we looked at an uh, analysis of the reports uh, that found that the readability of the IPCC reports had decreased over time as scrutiny of the IPCC has increased. Um, we talked about the need to bring uh, communication experts into the process. Um, one way of doing that was uh, developing guidelines or style guides for the authors, but it was also stressed that uh, we needed to do more than that, that, that we also needed um, communication experts working with the authors um, throughout the process. Um, there were, we talked about multiple entry points uh, where communication experts could come into the, into the process. And so I think that's the topic for discussion uh, tomorrow is, is when, um, when other, other external people can be brought in and also who, um, whether it's communication experts, journalists, um, researchers in linguistics or psychology, anthropologists, uh, editors. So there's, there's a whole range of um, different uh, experts that can be brought into the process, and I think that needs to be discussed further. There was a lot of talk about narrative and, and story, about creating a, an overarching um, narrative uh, throughout the IPCC report, but that to do this effectively would require um, uh, experts as well to help the scientists to do this. Then we uh, started talking about uncertainty, and David Bidescu uh, talked about his research into the differences between the IPCC uncertainty terms and how the average layperson, um, their intuition about those terms and, and the difference between the two. Uh, he recommended um, that when, when the scientists, uh, when the IPCC use uncertainty terms, that they combine them with nu numerical estimates of confidence. Although then Chris talked about how the challenges of this approach, because the scientists don't often have those numbers available. So, uh, yeah, I'm. I think that's something for a further discussion as well. Uh, we talked about the, um, the fact that there is, there's different parts of the report. Um, there's the chapters, the SPM, and so when we're talking about improving the readability of these reports, what, what, are, what part of the report are we talking about? Is it everything? Should, should we um, just be focusing on the SPM? And so I think, I think generally the, the sense was that um, the primary focus needed to be on, on the summary for policy makers, but also that the chapters uh, needed to be improved as well because the, when the chapters are improved, that, that translated to making the work easier and creating the SPM. Uh, different, we also emphasise that different parts of the report have different audiences. So, um, so identifying each audience for different parts of the report is important because that has implications for how those reports... Uh, or how those parts should be written. Um, we talked about stakeholder engagement. The, um, that, I guess, the, the approach of the IPCC generally is, is one way, I mean, in a sense, we're, we're telling people what they need to know. But um, exploring the idea of the IPCC, uh, engaging in more stakeholder engagement so that they can find out what people want to know and, and what are the needs of our target audiences. Uh, and. We, I guess we had a lot of discussion about the specifics of readability, about the length of the IPCC reports needing to be shorter, about the type of language, um, passive versus active language, uh, the importance of visuals, the fact that um, when we create visuals, I guess the temptation as a scientist is to pour as much information into those visuals as possible, um, but that reduces the effectiveness of, of graphics as a communication tool. Uh, have I missed anything? That's all I've got in my brief summary, but is there anything else um, from, from that group that, I, that we should have looked at, that I should have um, described? We're happy with that? Okay. I think you're happy with that. Thank you. Um, comments or questions from, from mainly from people that weren't in that group? Leo. Thank you. Uh, I heard one interesting thing about bringing in communication experts. I heard you mention anthropologists, and that made me think, 
between, there should be a, a, a clear line between communication expertise and content expertise from a certain academic discipline, because the latter is, of course, is the, is the remit of the, of the authors and the co-chairs, not so much from the communication expert. Could you elaborate on that? Yeah, so that was, um, that was uh, uh, the anthropologist was uh, talking about the working group three report, and I guess, yeah, that was more um, in the drafting of the content, I think. So I guess I was conflating the communications and, and content there. So, um, yeah, that's a separate issue. Other comments or questions? Okay, thank you. Next group was um, discussed recommendations on derivative products. Uh, and the rapporteur for that group is Joy Shri. Joy Shri. Joy Shri. <laughs> and you will need a microphone. Sure. This needs to be yeah. It's on. It's on. So uh, we discussed uh, quite a number of things, and uh, it was quite interesting brainstorming session. And uh, what we downloaded on the piece of papers are left in the room B, but I have brought the summary sheet. And in this, what we tried to do was that uh, we tried to answer why the derivative products and what needs to go in the derivative products and who are going to produce this and how to get this done. And of course, the readability was one of the questions. And so readability is the guiding <coughs> principle why we need the derivative products. And it was felt that they are really useful to communicate to many people the way they like it to read the whole report. So, um, uh, 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 and it was uh, thought that they need to be separate from the main reports. And uh, how do we decide what are going to be the derivative products? For that, we thought that uh, it is important to have a need assessment from those who will be using it. So taking the user perspective will be useful. So how do you get the user's perspective from early on? So uh, the discussion was that it can be that when we have the scoping meeting, so one way is that we do have observers as the non-state actors who can come in for the scoping meeting. So that can be one way of getting, but there may be a much broader engagement and better way of involving the need assessment is to have a back-to-back, -back, like uh, so when we start our scoping meeting just a day early, we have a scoping meeting with the non-state actors. And who will be the participants? That can be uh, found out by an open call for participants and explaining what we are trying to do. And so those who will be interested in participation, how that can be, so that can be decided. So from that, whatever consensus generates that what needs to be the derivative products, so that can, uh, I mean, need assessment that can go into the scoping meeting discussion and that can form the, get into the outline of the um, reports and that then distilling out of the main reports, the derivative products will be easier and will be kind of integrated in one sense. So from that point of view, we also thought that uh, so, uh, as, uh, the, uh, as the external agencies are producing these derivative products, that is fine, and how to involve the IPCC authors informally can be looked into. And um, also the, for uh, derivative product authors to have a timely production of with the main reports, it's important to involve them from the uh, early on in the process of the IPCC process, uh, report 
um, progresses. So how to involve them from the very beginning is something which needs to be looked into and that will be useful so they can have access to the IPCC uh, report as they progresses. And um, uh, so, uh, 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 and, and all these derivative product reports need to go into a website which is uh, connected to the IPCC um, website, but then that website really needs to be interesting, interactive, and need to have a longer life so that it stays on the reports. Um, so another thing which was discussed is that do we need, need can we uh, have a single summary report for the citizens? And um, it was after the very rich brainstorming session, I would say that what we could come up with is that, yes, of course, we need but not one single report because citizens are can be thought of the summary for policymaker is for the state actors. And of course, that report need to, um, I mean, their readability need to enhance in the AR6. But for the non-state actors, what we can have is actually target the audience focused reports and that should also be demand driven and of the citizens what kind of reports are needed. Then we found that the earlier discussion of derivative products of um, uh, based on need assessment is actually falling in place in the same line as a citizen's report based on the need assessment. So actually this can be thought of within the derivative products based on need assessment, bringing the citizens into the um, uh, scoping meeting, not main scoping meeting, but early on and to have a back-to-back back -back coordination. And um, what was, yep, yeah, I think that's all, if I have not missed any. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Um, sorry, we, uh, sorry? I think yeah. Which would be? Yes. We'll take Leo's addition and then open up for mm. comments. Just one addition about this summary for citizens. Yeah. We decided that we would not need one summary for mm. citizens, but instead targeted products for different audiences and different stakeholders. Thank you. Uh, Andreas? I just have one question relating to the IPCC communication strategy. Um, while the IPCC itself does not produce derivative products is, is one of the uh, cornerstones here. Uh, did you deal with that question? What did you say? Can you uh, just say? Yeah. The IPCC strategy explicitly exclu ex excludes the production of derivative products. So have you discussed that, how to deal with this? Yeah. Microphones. Yes, I, th I have been tasked to uh, provide a report for the uh, strategy and then we discussed and then we said that IPCC should encourage the production of derivative products by providing to the extent possible scientific and technical support uh, in accordance to IPCC procedure. Okay, thank you. Um, Richard. Uh, thanks, yes, yeah, so just coming back to the first group, we uh, took a rather different view of the summary for citizens. We didn't really see why a separate um, uh, ultra comprehensible summary for citizens should be regarded as a sort of extra or an add-on. We thought it should actually be a core thing because many of the policy makers with whom we need to communicate if more effectively also need exactly that sort of thing. So our view is it should be part of the core offering and, and tomorrow we're intending to you know, discuss how that tallies with the need to have a, 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 length, a, a longer summary for policymakers and, and so on. So, so it's part of the adopted report? Exactly, yes. Right. Uh, Stuart? Um, you, you sound, in terms of the scoping, a little bit further down the line than, as, as Richard was saying, we're, we're sort of at a different stage. But you talked about um, who you get to be involved in that process. Was there any um, discussion about 
validity of that? Because I, you know, I, I'm, our organisation works with a number of UN bodies, and sometimes you get, because of the nature of the UN being much a very inclusive organisation, or wishing to be very inclusive, it sometimes includes people that don't necessarily have a. Um, a basis of evidence to to support their hypothesis and therefore might be wasting a lot of time or, or guiding you in a particular direction because they they want it because they know rather than not the people that you don't. But I didn't know whether you thought about that. Um, more uh, are there more comments or um, okay. Uh, I'm adding something and then if uh, I miss out something you all can add. Actually we discussed the who will be the participant. So first we started listing out who can be the participants and then we thought that oh no that's not the way how we pick and choose. So we thought that we can have an open call and ask people, I mean non-state actors who want to, I mean, because we will have a full concept of scoping meeting what we are going to scope, right? And so we can ask the citizens to, uh, to justify why they think they really need to participate in this, what they can be, bring on the table, giving the scope of the meeting. So that's how we thought that it can be an association, it can be a group, it can be an individual. So we, we can make it the most ex inclusive if we can keep it open call. That's what we discussed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next group, uh, they discussed recommendations on communication with stakeholders. And I believe, Jessica, you will be uh, presenting from that group. Thank you. It's already midnight in my part of the world, so my brain doesn't work very well, so I'll ask uh, for help from my, my colleagues. And uh, how do I click? I just, okay. Okay. So, um, so we were tasked with uh, the group on engaging stakeholders, and these are our outputs from uh, the, the discussion. So we had a discussion from... Um, we started with a, a discussion of a uh, presentation of Andrea's reflections and looking at the science policy interface and uh, perhaps reflecting on the, with some of the use of the structured expert dialogue, but uh, highlighting, of course, the inadequacy of the deficit model and by doing so, uh, encouraging to move uh, to a bi directional model of communication where the, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Where the uh, where the technical summary of our um, of the report will give headlines and the communication choice must be uh, empowering policymakers to act on information and um, looking at the timeliness of the communication of the key findings uh, of of the IPCC report. Um, in doing so, we're able to also. Um, I said, who are the primary stakeholder? Who is the primary stakeholder of the IPCC? And uh, that will be the UNFCCC. But also to keep in mind that it's also all stakeholders and not the ju just new ones. So um, secondly, we actually looked at um, uh, the, sorry, a presentation of Paul. And uh, the again, we tried to figure out who will be our uh, uh, stakeholders, and this includes the the sectors that are listed there. Uh, but uh, how we do this is that we keep in mind that um, it's essential that we we identify what moves the policymakers and therefore unlock communication pathways, um, engage the stakeholders and learn what matters to them, but also engage the scientists and use um, the science information relevant to target um, uh, stakeholders and um, put in mind that we facilitate a more cooperative knowledge uh, process. Okay. Um, then we went into the scoping, you know, uh, the process, and uh, uh, again, uh, bearing in mind that it's engaging UNFCCC, business, I, 
IGOs and INGOs, but uh, there was a particular recommendation to make sure that the synthesis report scoping is done before other report uh, scoping, and this is to address coherent issues among working groups. Um, there's, uh, we're also uh, encouraged to um, uh, move towards effective and more inclu inclusive scoping processes and making sure that uh, there's a representative set of informants, but also um, exploring the possibility of open online process and that the out um, and making sure that the output from um, the IPCC dialogues inform the planning of a uh, working group. There was a question on the uh, length of the time for scoping, considering the urgency to act. Uh, but um, it was raised in the discussions that this was already part of the discussion for the future work of the IPCC. Okay. Um, again, on outreach, um, so we tried to identify various stakeholders that are listed there, but we would want to learn also from the example of the Intergovernmental Panel on Biodiversity and Ecosystems. Um, and um, on the how, we would want to explore other media uh, and platforms for disseminating the IPCC report, uh, looking and um, making sure that IPCC facilitates other organizations to do regional work. And in the process of engaging with other organizations, um, uh, um, to ensure that we do not limit the preparation of derivatives. I think that was also raised in, in the other groups. Um, also in, on the question of outreach, um, in communicating the IPCC report, um, uh, it, it was raised in the conversation and um, that we need to reflect on values congruent but scientifically correct process that fosters activation. Uh, perhaps looking at two uh, to three way or more communication process, exploring the potential of social media, targeting uh, relevant outcomes, and uh, at the same time delivering information that are relevant to stakeholders. And there was a proposition that we explore perhaps the use of networks, and in this case, an example on adaptation networks that connect sectors, institutions, and communities to be able to act on, on, on a climate change issue. Um, also on outreach, um, there was a suggestion that we continue to mine the AR5 uh, over the next couple of years um, and to secure that uh, we move towards pathways also for engaging the private sector. Um, there was a realization that there are a lot of missed opportunities and we're hoping that this could be addressed. Um, also a suggestion that we move from the framework of coming up with just a report and rather also moving to rapport building with science and spreading uh, the information, communicating the information vertically and horizontally, um, looking at linking household relevant issues to policy making and decision making processes. Uh, to end, um, one of our group members uh, told me, I think the message from the discussion is that how do we move from knowledge to meaning? So with that, I end our presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Um, questions, comments, objections? Okay. I see Jim and Lance. Just a question as to whether we want our recommendations to work within existing IPCC procedures or go outside them, because it is very difficult to move things on. There are a lot of people who will object if you go outside. And I noticed the recommendation for an online open process for scoping meetings. And IPCC actually has quite a well-defined process for how people get into scoping meetings in that people need to be nominated by government focal points, observers, and bureau members. And then there's a, the selection is done by the bureau of the respective working groups against a set of criteria. But one of these criteria is to choose experts with a background from relevant stakeholder and user groups. So you actually have all the tools you need to actually get quite a wide set of stakeholder groups in there, whether it's business or other NGOs. And maybe we should think about putting the recommendations in such a way as that they work within the existing IPCC procedures. Because as soon as you recommend going out, you've got to get a lot of resistance potentially from individual parties. 
Uh, Lance? Just quickly, could you back up two slides? I, I just wanted to make sure I was correct on something. Um, so yeah, if, just a quick comment. Um, I, the idea of learning from others is terrific, and they learn from the IPCC as well. Right now, IPBS is learning a lot from I, IPCC as it gets prepared to uh, issue its next assessment report, so there's a, a nice circular motion there. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, Jessica, do you want to respond? Uh, I think on the first uh, proposition, I'll ask for help from my fellow colleagues who are you know, members of the IPCC. What do you think about that? We'll continue tomorrow, the answer. Okay, we still have uh, okay. a session tomorrow. You're welcome to the group, yeah. okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the last group to present, um, okay. thank you, Jessica. The last group to present uh, discussed recommendations on communications with and through the media. And uh, Heidi Cullen was the rapporteur. Welcome up. All right, um, so uh, in the discussion this afternoon, we made it through um, recommendations on communications with and through media, including comms before the report is finalized, as well as the use of external resources, um, and the rest we will leave for tomorrow's discussion. So, oops, recommendation one. Um, this is following up on Hunter's point from this morning that science writers are indeed needed, um, but then also this concept of, you know, whether you'd like to call it a press secretary embedded within the working groups to understand the news media filter and the public policy landscape. Um, recommendation two, this is around the pre-release. So it's important uh, to begin pre-release relationship building with the media. One of the ways you could do this is, for example, by going to um, journalism conferences, examples like the Society of Environmental Journalists have a, have a meeting every year. NABJ is the National Association of Black Journalists. Um, and, and just have a, have a session on the IPCC to educate them and lay the groundwork for understanding the process and the eventual findings to put the IPCC into context. Um, and this kind of also gets to the point about the fact that uh, journalists are are um, turning over, if you will, a lot. We're gonna have a, a younger crop of um, both journalists and, and even um, Hill staffers or, or uh, government folks. So it, it's important to kind of really continue that education process because it's not gonna be sort of the same, the same uh, tier uh, group of journalists that we're currently working with. And then offer pre-report briefings by members of the working groups to the press. Recommendation three, um, ensuring that when the report is communicated, it's done so on a truly global basis and that it, the IPCC draws upon and supports and really highlights non-native English speakers as well. Recommendation four, um, this speaks to the inevitable distribution of review drafts and to really develop a clear game plan for that. So it's almost kind of um, you know, merging both um, a, a rapid response capability and then also a, um, a proactive, um, a, pr a proactive strategy, because it's it's clear that that this does happen um, every cycle, and you know the ways to do this could include just having a laissez-faire approach, recognizing these leaks will happen, and then plan for it within existing procedures, um, and then have that plan really uh, allow the IPCC to, to take control of the leak, not by confirming the substance, but by providing context from um, the plenary uh, and approved outlines, et cetera. Also consider revising procedure to eliminate the embargo on drafts and engage the public directly. Uh, and then also um, possibly to rely on relevant external scientists to help frame the response, but, but mostly to you know, just really recognize that this is gonna happen. Uh, recommendation number five, create a communication network of networks. Um, I think folks really liked Susan's um, idea from this morning and that you know, the development of that should take lessons learned from NCA Net. 
And that really, you know, the goal here is to engage a very broad range of institutions and sectors of society who just who are interested in the science. Um, and then also to, to focus on communications officers at research organizations and scientific societies, uh, and then interacting with associations, federations of science, communications experts. Um, I think, I think uh, one of the folks in our group really made the point that you know, these research organizations are where we're drawing our, our science expertise from, so coordinating with those communications officers uh, is, a, is a good way to really build the future of, of um, IPCC. Um, scientific um, authors. Recommendation six, and I believe I've got eight in total, uh, an outreach strategy that keeps an open mind to the evolving media landscape and embraces this global focus. And, you know, really to just um, have, some, have some brainstorming sessions where we're thinking about what the media landscape will look like five to six years out, um, but continues to recognize, I think, what everyone sees as the continued dominance of radio and mobile in, in certain places. Recommendation seven, obviously we need multimedia products, uh, good professionally developed multimedia products, animations, infographics, videos, uh, and that these graphics should be produced for the, the report, but also for broadcasters and the online community. And then finally, this is sort of a little bit outside of um, our frame, if you will, but it was it was really to just acknowledge the fact that all of these recommendations require uh, greater levels of support than is currently available to the IPCC comms team, um, and that another way to look at this is to really consider a superstructure to connect the working group comms activities with the secretariat functions, and um, we also discussed possibly setting up a comms advisory board or task force, and that would allow the IPCC to tap into um, social science expertise within the academic community, possibly also within the business sector uh, and some of, some of the, the strong comms departments on the business side, um, but to really you know, think about this uh, the, the structure and, and again, recognizing that, that um, support is, is gonna be um, a constraint and that maybe we can, we can think about ways to improve that as well. So that was it. Thank you. Yes. Comments, questions, objections? Leo? Microphone, Microphone for Leo. Uh, <laughs> One microphone will do this time. Uh, thank you. To start with the very last point, there is already something like that in the IPCC, and that is called the CAT, the Communication Action Team, I believe, which which is a combination of people from the TSUs and the Secretariat, and actually the whole XCOM is involved in that, so that's super structured. I would like to come back to the point of the leakage. In previous sessions, there was, uh, we, we have been talking about why don't we simply make the drafts of IPCC reports online, they will leak anyway, and then it's no fun anymore to, to do some IPCC bashing from that. Also in the light of becoming more transparent. Well, this did not fly yet because the pre previous bureau was not really ready for, for, for that. My hope is that the current bureau is make this next step and just make drafts uh, um, public since they will leak anyway. The fear that people would misinterpret stuff, I think we can get over that by proper communication. Thank you. Thank you. Lance? Uh, just to, to Leo's point about the, about the communication to action uh, uh, team, this, the superstructure we're talking about here is, is somewhat different. It's, it, more simply put, it's just linking up the people who are working within the working groups to do communications with Jonathan's group there, so that there's more communication uh, between them, which there wasn't, uh, we, could, we could strengthen that to be sure, with an outside advisory group, and you could, you know, work the cat into that as well. I have Jim and then Richard. Yeah, yeah, so, so j just a quick one. All the recommendations I, I think are really good. If you're taking it further, it might be well worth thinking about which ones can be implemented by being more clever 
and which ones can be implemented by allocating more resources to it. Uh, those of us co-chairs who are negotiating with focal points at the moment are conscious that this is the first, uh, first IPCC cycle since the economic crisis and are under heavy negotiating th issues about how what we can actually fit in. So the, I think the idea, for example, we could put a press secretary kind of person in each working group. Uh, I cannot imagine <coughs> proposing that to the UK government at the moment, uh, given that they've gasped at what I've put into them already. Thank you. Uh, Richard. <coughs> yeah, it, it strikes me there is a crossover between some of the uh, media work and some of the scoping work. Um, if, for example, you, let's say you, you put one of the lead authors, um, you know, on, on BBC World Service Radio uh, for Africa on a phone-in, fairly near the beginning of the cycle, you're able to draw in ideas that may genuinely be useful. You're communicating the IPCC process. You're showing to journalists that you're kind of open. And, um, you know, and, and also, you know, journalists will be among the ones who are actually being informed by that process. So I think there's a, you know, there are many ways, probably other ways, but that just, you know, there are, there, there's a connection basically between the two. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hunter? Just on the comms advisory board or task force, uh, not to keep bringing it up, but the U.S. National Climate Assessment also had that as a feature on it. Um, separate from the NACADAC, this was specifically an advisory group of an academic pollster, a sociologist, a scientist that, that specifically were there to give a high-level guidance on, on those issues. And so it would be worth checking in with them and see if there are any lessons from that structure. Thank you. Um, Heidi, would you like to respond to some of these comments? Um, I think, actually, some of the comments have been responded to. Um, and, no, I, th I think that, mm -hmm. I don't know. Let me, let me look at um, Ko and Tim and my other members. Okay, we're good. We're good? We're good. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Including yourself. <laughs> um, I would now like to invite Pauline Midgley up to give some... Um, some conclusions regarding the um, uh, strategy, communication strategy. And you will be speaking on behalf of all four of the, That's the groups. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, well, in fact, you've seen, um, obviously, the recommendations which have been put up by some of the working groups al already here, or by the, the breakout groups already here, on, and mentioned uh, by the other ones. Um, so I was asked to try and sort of look across what had been said by all of the groups and try and pull together some sort of common themes. Um, I think one of the, uh, what's clear is that the, there will be a recommendation that there should be at least some um, review and updating of the communication strategy. The commu communication strategy has with it an implementation plan and many of the, um, and this sounds you know, probably very bureaucratic and you know, sort of techie kind of thing, but many of the, the points which have been brought up here are in fact part of the implementation, not the strategy itself, but the, the points will be captured and they'll be brought forward to the process which Jonathan is going to um, manage, we hope, for, ma for making all that happen. Um, in terms of things which are, shall we say, uh, really strategic, I think rethinking the approach to derivative products and um, explaining what that means, whether it's um, encouraging support without formal approval, but being much more explicit about what it actually means to facilitate derivative products, I think is an important thing, and where exactly they're placed in the cycle, in the process, in the scoping, not in the scoping, or, or wherever you might want to put them. So the, the whole issue around derivative products, I think, need, actually needs some boiling down at this meeting, because I'm hearing very different views of what a derivative product is. And I think that that would be more helpful if we had a, a common view as to what was an IPCC product and what was a derivative product, if we're going to actually use those terms. Um, one comment was about moving from report to report and having a, a parallel communication strategy. I think it's actually more of a continuous communication strategy. It also, which essentially captures different stages of the process, including, uh, which I'm glad somebody mentioned, the, the mining of the AR5 for the next couple of years to actually say, you know, there really is information here which we can be using now. Um, there is very much, these are, you, you'll gather in no particular order, there is very much a one-way feel to the current communication strategy. There is a target audience and we will give you it, what you need. And, uh, you know, I think everybody has now realised that that's, um, it, it definitely needs to be, communication is, is not just one way. Um, a couple of the things about building up 
building up the pre-release relationship with media, um, having a game plan for premature release of, of uh, drafts. Those are all, I think, important things which need to be part of that. Um, also, I don't think actually anybody said it, so I'm going to say it. Um, it was said certainly in some of the, the discussion that I was in, it's outreach. It's, it's not just communication, it's also outreach. And we need to be clear that, so I don't know whether the communication strategy needs to be called the communication and outreach strategy, um, but it needs to have that outreach element in it. Otherwise, the danger is people, especially if we're talking about cutting budgets, people will say, well, that's not communication, so we'll just consider one part of it. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any comments to those recommendations or conclusions? Questions, questions? Leo? Could you uh, describe what the different views are? <laughs> they won't hear you in Germany, uh, no matter could, how loud you <laughs> <laughs> Could you explain what the different views were that you heard on, the, on what derivative products were? Well, I heard people talking about uh, derivative products being produced by the panel, or by, by the author teams, okay? That, to me, is not a derivative product. That's um, if it's actually produced by them. If you're talking about them being scoped, even if they're being, sco if they're being scoped by IPCC, is that a derivative product? I'd rather think it's not. Um, but th that's where that line, I think, needs to, be, needs to be drawn. And other people talking about, you know, not exactly scrap them all together, but they are very definitely something outside of the, <coughs> the, current, the, the process of the assessment reports. Thank you. Thank you, Pauline. Okay. Um, this concludes the wrap-up of the breakout sessions. And uh, as you know, we've been broadcast live on the internet today, which has resulted in a phenomenal Twitter stream. Uh, Nina, um, could you uh, give us a short summary of what has been happening in social media today? Sure. So, hello everyone. For those who don't know me, I work in the communications team of the IPCC, um, mainly on outreach. And today I have been compiling some of the tweets because as we've been webcasted, you see on that wall that there were many, apparently more than 400 posts. So, um, there was a lot of interest, and I know that many of you were posting from here, so <laughs> thank you for this also. Um, as you could see, there was a lot of anticipation for the event, and here are some examples of some of the tweets that came through. And also, today we have been one of the top five trends on Trendy for Germany, which for Germany, <laughs> don't know. <laughs> um, so that's been maybe for 40, 40 minutes, we've been there, top five. Um, <coughs> so, <laughs> it is <laughs> great. Um, there have been some discussions on the webcast and whether the event will be webcast or, or not. This is a compilation of some of these tweets um, and of course um, very much retweeted were some of the experience shared uh, by um, our uh, speakers on experience and lessons on the Air 5 and of course there were a lot of opinions, <laughs> suggestions and opportunities. There was discussion also whether um, all stakeholders were involved in meeting, but also a lot of suggestions for the future work on communications of the IPCC, including on what type of stakeholders should be invited, that there should be more social scientists and other suggestions from the room that have been retweeted. And actually, my presentation is quite short because I don't want to bore you. <laughs> but uh, I want you to finish with that one, which is on the vision and the opportunities. Because as you could see, um, in the senior management of the IPCC, there is a goodwill for, for communications to be one of the key, um, uh, one of the key uh, elements in our work. And this has been also tweeted 
widely. Uh, so we focus today on Twitter, but of course we have also a, um, a Facebook and a LinkedIn account, and also we're on Instagram. So. <laughs> Um, in terms of statistics, just to give you, yeah, I told you 402 posts, and actually in the last week we've got 360, 358 followers since we started posting about, uh, posting about this meeting, and also this meeting apparently had more than 3 million impressions, which means the times that people look at a certain tweet and reached out more than 1 million people. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, do we know how many people have been following the webcast? No. That, oh, sorry. Uh, that information will be with the hosts, actually, so oh, it's okay. not with me. Yeah. We'll but try maybe to find we do out. know. And if we know, we'll let you know probably later or tomorrow. We can try to find out yeah. tomorrow. OK, thank you very thank much. You. This concludes. Uh, the first day, uh, and it leaves you with about 12 minutes to get to the bus. And, but before we leave, uh, Jonathan would like to say something. And I, I, I also need to make one point on housekeeping. Please collect all your personal belongings, and if you would be so kind as to take your coffee cups, etc., out of this room. Um, if, if you forget any paper, uh, it will not be thrown away, but it will be collected in a pile and put somewhere, because the cleaners need to come in here so that this room looks spick and span tomorrow morning at eight, 9 o'clock. Uh, you can leave those um, here on, on the table. Thank you. Now it's on. Yeah. Um, so I'm told this is the first IPCC meeting in history to not only be running over time, but actually to be finishing ahead of time. And um, <laughs> anyway, the, the contact group on um, square brackets will meet in room B at 11 p.m. <laughs> and the contact group on B at uh, 2 a.m. in room, room C. <laughs> um, so um, though. <laughs> no translation, yeah, right. And, um, but uh, seriously, unfortunately, all, um, we'll, we'll meet with all the co-chairs and rapporteurs here tomorrow at 8, 8 a.m. or so that we can really plan the rest of the, the day and fine-tune that stuff we've just been talking about. Um, I hope that's okay. And um, we, uh, we're now off to see what uh, a warming climate is doing to a country that depends on snow for its tourism and general feeling of uh, goodwill at the ski jump. So enjoy the evening. Yeah.